Hello everyone, this is Arohi and welcome to my channel. So guys, in my today's video, I'll show you how to create your own object detection web application using YOLO V8 and Flask. So I'll show you the demo of that app first and then I'll explain you how to create that app. Okay, so let's begin. Let's see here. So over here, you'll choose a file. Let's select a file. So I will explain you how to work with image first. I'm showing you how to use image. So this is the image. Let's select this image and click on the upload. When you'll click on the upload, it YOLO V8 process will uh, will process the image and it will show you the output. So you can see here, right? And then let's suppose if you want to work on a video, then you can select a video from here. So now in this case, now I'm choosing this video okay now let's upload it and it depends upon the size of the video that how much time it will take to process it okay and once the processing uh, done you will see the output on the screen over here only so let's see how much work i've done so you can see the work is still going on so so uh, this yolo v8 is processing all the frames right now and you can see here is the output video okay so guys this is how it will this app will work now i will first of all i will tell you uh, how to set up the python environment to run this code and then we'll talk about the data set which i have used in this uh, class and then after that i'll show you how to train your yolo v8 model and finally i'll show you once you've done the training how to use that trained model in a flask app okay so let's pick it so uh, uh, for this uh, environment setup i have used python 3.8 okay and once you see guys i always uh, recommend you to use a separate environment okay so in my case i am using a separate environment let's open the environment so it is in d drive then cd yolo v8 so this is the folder in which i have created the environment so now i will activate the environment so this is my environment okay and if you'll see the python version which i'm using is python 3.8 okay so the environment which i've created that environment is working on a python 3.8 after that as this yolo v8 uh, you can simply install yolo uh, v8 by writing a one command pip install ultralytics so you will write pip install ultralytics and uh, just hit enter and after that you will have all the required modules which are required to run yolo v8 okay so now you have everything so activated the i have in activated my environment in the same way you will activate your environment now let's open a uh, jupyter notebook because uh, I have uh, prepared a Jupyter notebook where I have executed all the steps for training. So I'll show you that uh, Jupyter notebook, how to train your data set. Okay. So for that, click here and see this is the Jupyter notebook I'm using. Let's open that Jupyter notebook. So guys, the Ultralytics version I'm using is this. See um, guys, as this YOLO V8 is, they are still making improvements in the, uh, you know, model. So it is important to work on a specific version. So the version which I'm working upon is this, okay? And after that, uh, this is the GPU on which I'm working RTX 3090 and my torch version is 1.11.0 and it is uh, compiled with CUDA. So guys, uh, this step, when you will execute this step so if sometime let's suppose if there is any problem with your torch version or if the torch is not compiled with cuda after executing this command then you can manually install the torch from the official torch uh, website let me open it So just go to the PyTorch official uh, this website and from here you can uh, download PyTorch manually as per uh, your CUDA version. So you can check your CUDA version from your machine and then uh, the as per your CUDA version just install the PyTorch as per that. Okay. So after that, so these are the four lines 
with which you can train your YOLO V8 model. So we are importing the YOLO and then using these two lines. So this means we want to uh, use the pre-trained model okay, of YOLO and then we are fine tuning it with our data.yaml file. So this data.yaml file contains the information about your custom data set on which you want to train your YOLO V8 model. Okay, so the data set on which I am working is okay. So under this folder, okay, this this is the data sets folder, and inside it I have my data set. And you can see we have train validation and test folder, and inside train you have images and labels and inside images you will get all the related images and inside labels you will have all the text annotation files YOLO model accepts annotation in text format so that's why we have all the uh, annotations in the text format okay in the same way for valid also images and labels all right so this is the data set on which I'm training and let me tell you more about the data set so this is my data.yaml file so guys over here you have to provide the path of your training images and in val you have to provide the path of your validation images and the number of classes i am detecting is 10 and these are the names of those 10 classes okay hard hat mask no hard hat no mask okay like this so these are the different classes i want to detect um, so I will train my model on such data set so that it can detect all these 10 classes. Okay. So I have shown you my data set. The, that data set, uh, we have all the details of that data set in this data.yaml file. So model.train, we want to train the model. So that's why we have written this. And this is the file which will uh, provide the data information to the model and I want to train my model for 100 epochs okay so once the training done after that let's go back here so see this is the Jupyter notebook I'm showing you and here is my data set folder now you will get a runs folder once you start the training command okay once the training command started you will get this runs folder and inside this runs you will get a detect folder and here you will get a train folder inside the train folder once your training done you will get all these files and inside this weights you will get your weight file so this you will get this best.pt all the other things best.pt and last.pt you will get after executing the command which i've just shown you after running this cell okay and once um, it uh, you know 100 epochs have been completed after that you will get this best.pt and last.pt okay all the other files this i've shown you in some time like what i've done so basically i'm exporting the model in different formats okay so these are these three things are not a part of this today's tutorial okay so training done so now we have best.pt file now this best.pt file is trained on our data set so it can detect all the 10 classes our custom 10 classes okay so now we'll copy this file this uh, trained model from here and we are placing it over here okay so here you can see this templates static and web app.py these two folders templates static okay these two folders are related to our web application okay if you'll open templates you will see all the you know html files which are um, you know which will show your uh, this web application on uh, your uh, browser okay so index.html file is important because in this file only we have written all the important code let me show you okay let's go back to the app so here you can see all this code right this button and then this button so all these things we have designed we have uh, uh, written all the html code on those html files which are there in templates folder and the static folder 
this static folder have all the CSS files again these are related to uh, the designing part so let's suppose if you don't you just want to try this applic uh, I uh, just try this application and you are not focusing on designing much then you can leave this folder empty also okay so clear about these two folders now you have to create one more folder with the name of uploads this you have to create why we need this folder because whenever we will browse the file from here whenever let's suppose you are browsing this file okay so you are uploading it so once you click on this upload this file will be stored in this uploads folder you can see whatever we have okay uh, till the time whatever you will upload through that app all those things are getting stored in this folder okay so that's why you need to create this uploads folder now let's talk about this web app.py this is the only file in this file we have created all the flask application the full flask application functions are written in this file so let's see this file now okay so this is my web app.py file let's start from the beginning so these are the important modules unity import and this file line using just by writing this line you can use yolo v8 inside your flask application functions okay so we are importing that and then we are creating a flask app so this is just a basic function this function will open a index.html page and what is our index.html page so this is our index.html page okay so this basic function we are calling now this function over here predict image function in this function what we have written is first we are reading the data from the html form the data which user is selecting here and then when user click on this upload button we need to fetch this data from here then only we can work on that that image or video whatever user is selecting over here choosing over here once the user choose it and it click on person click on this upload button we need this data in some python variable so that we can further work on it okay so that's what we are getting here so now let's see why we are writing this what this means is so for that open the index.html file which is in templates folder okay just scroll down and over here you can see see these are the few important lines guys these are the few lines which you need rest of the code which i have rest of the tag which i'm using over here those are just related to the you know uh, the beautification of that html page you can leave that only these four or five lines you need just create a form form tag and here you have to mention this and then this file input type is equal to file name equals to file okay and then we have a button with the name of upload so you can see the name of over, name which we are giving to this input type equals to file is file so that's why we have written file over here okay so we want to use we want to get the data which is present in um, input type equals to file where the name is file okay and we are storing it in this variable okay now these next few lines these are just we want to store that data in the uploads folder remember we have created uploads folder so whatever user is browsing and we want to store that data in the uploads folder so that's what i'm doing over here okay in these lines and after that now if the file extension is jpg means whatever user is browsing and if the file extension is jpg then i want to run this code and if the file extension of this file if the file extension over here is mp4 then i want to use this code okay so this this block of code will work for if user will choose let's suppose if user uh, chose a image so this part part will work and if user chose mp4 video then this part will perform the detection so now let's see one by one so 
we are reading the video uh, sorry we are reading the image which image we are reading which is present in this file path so what we have in file path the user the image which user just choose okay so we are giving that image over here then we are encoding that image we are performing this step also and over here see in this yolo variable i am calling the best dot pt so remember what is this this is the trained model uh, and we have trained it on a custom data set so we are providing the path of our best.pt file over here now inside yolo variable we have our custom trained model now we are predicting uh, where we are predicting on which image we want to predict the image which is present in image variable save equals to true will save the result in uh, runs folder okay and then i am calling a display function so after performing the prediction see guys with this much of code your results will be stored in runs slash detect folder okay but if you want to show those results on the screen as i am showing here see let's choose the image first and then upload it so you can see results are uh, you can see the results on the html page so for showing the results like this on the html page i have used a separate function with the name of display okay so this step is optional if you want to show the results on a html page then you can use it otherwise by writing this much of code you will get your results stored over here okay over here runs detect and over here you will get the results okay by this much of code now to show the result on a html page we are using a display function let's see where is this display function so this is the display function so what i'm doing in this um, function is i am just runs slash detect what is it whenever yolo v8 uh, perform any detection it by default stores the output in uh, inside this detect folder which is in runs folder okay so we are getting that subfolders means we are getting all the folders which are present in detect folder latest subfolder will have the folder name of the latest prediction folder which is created under detect folder and then file we are getting the data from the latest folder okay latest prediction folder and then over here you can see these two lines if the file extension is jpg means if the if there that is a image then we are using send from directory method of a flask and we are sending that data to our html page okay directory means in which directory that uh, data is present and then the name of that file and then this okay request dot environment so you have to send like this this function will show you the output on html page okay now let's see how video work so now we have done this if condition okay from this predict image function we have done this much now let's understand the code of video how to work how to use yolo v8 uh, with flask okay so the file path whatever user is choosing the browsing okay that thing we are getting in a, a file uh, this video path and then we are using cv2 dot video capture so we want to read a video using cv2 so that's why we are using video capture and then we are storing the frame height and width using this method the video which we are reading there would be some height and width of that video frames right so we are capturing that over here and these two lines i have used because uh, once the detection done on the input video i want to store that video where we have done the detections uh, i want to store that video so that's why we have written these two line so output dot mp4 video will have your video with the detected objects okay and then we are reading our uh, trained model okay and then this line what we are doing over here in these lines so if if there is a video and then we want to read that video until we reach the last frame okay so that's what we are doing and 
oh, we are reading all the frames and then on all the frames we are running the model what is there in a model this we we have called the our custom trained model in that variable so we are using our custom trained model on all the frames and save equals to true will save the result in a folder okay and then this we are using this and guys these two lines these two lines will help you to see the output video with the detections okay so let me show you this part first so guys uh, if you want to learn more about these things then you can learn it from here you can see this is the yolo v8 official uh, website and i over here on this page if you'll scroll down just go to the last and over here they have explained how to how we can plot our results so i have picked these lines from here and i am using those lines you can see here to plot the results okay with these two lines you can see the output video with the detected objects let's see how to do that so let's see this part okay go back now let's select a video so this time i am selecting let's let's select okay this video okay upload and so it is working over here see you can see all the frames are getting executed one by one so once this executed you are getting the video over here now i'll show you the function how we get the video on html page okay this i'll show you in a second but before that as i've told you that you will get a output dot mp uh, mp4 file okay how we are getting this because we have written a code for this over here okay where is it yeah here so this is output dot mp4 file and we are storing here out dot write we are writing all the frames where we have detected the objects over here okay so like this so let's open this output dot mp4 video and you can see so it is detecting all the objects okay now let's see the function which will show you this video on the html page so guys for that i am using this video feed function okay before moving to this part guys i uh, one more thing to note okay i in this comment section okay see sometimes what happen is you need some kind of functionality where you need the coordinates of the boxes or you need all those detections in a separate list or a file so if you let's suppose whatever detections we are doing whatever detections are happening over here wait so whatever detections are happening in the video if you want to get that data stored somewhere then you can use this see for result in results so what is this results in results we have called a model for each frame so like this you can get the values of box values and the probabilities the class and the xy coordinates xy and then the width and height coordinates okay if you want to get the list of these kind of things then you can use this kind of loop uh, on your result and you can get that also okay so now let's see what this video underscore feed function does so what i've told you this function will display your output video where you have done the detections on your html page okay so video feed function let's go to the video feed function so this is my video feed function and here you can see this function is returning this so this function is returning another function as a response this get frame function now what is get frame function this is get frame function 
so so guys in this get frame function what we are doing is the output dot mp4 video the output video which we have just um, got after um, making the predictions we are reading that file output dot mp4 we are reading that file we are reading all the frames one by one then we are encoding into a jpg and then we are using the yield function so guys this yield function is similar like return function only uh, there is only one difference that with the help of yield function you can um, return uh, a sequence of values so in our case we are working on a video which contains a sequence of frames so we are working on a sequence of frames we are working on a multiple values so that's why we have used the yield function otherwise yield function is similar like return function only okay so we are reading the frames using this get frame function so that get frame function we are uh, providing to the response uh, of uh, flask and now flask is showing this response on the html page okay so uh, this is how you can create your uh, custom applications using uh, yolo v8 and flask i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching